Today I'd like to show you how to get started with Subversion, including how to set up a repository, work on files, and utilize some of the enhanced features that Assembly.com offers on both its paid and free hosted Subversion accounts. While I'm explaining how all this works, I'm going to fix a few problems I recently noticed on one of my websites. This will provide a real-world example of how to use Subversion, especially if you're extremely simple-minded and have multiple personalities. First, add the Subversion tool to your workspace. You can get a free account or add it to your existing paid account. If you haven't already, install a Subversion client to handle the communication between the master copy of your project on the server and the working copy on your local hard drive. I'm using Tortoise SVN, which works with Windows Explorer, but I'll throw in a few examples from Smart SVN just to show you how another client looks. To populate your server repository initially, use the SVN import function. You can check to see that your files have arrived safely by using the Assembla code browser. Subversion records the who, what, and when of every change. The way Subversion works, you've got to create a new directory on your hard drive and then associate that new empty directory with a specific server repository. Right-click on the folder you plan to use and select SVN Checkout. Now copy your repository's URL and paste it in, and then enter your username and password. When this process completes, Tortoise SVN puts a green check mark on your folder to say it's up to date. Whenever you make changes to a file, Tortoise marks it with a red exclamation point. Use SVN Commit to commit your changes to the repository. It's always a good idea to describe what you're doing in the commit comments. Now that Dave's up and running, let's see how Prajesh approaches his work using Smart SVN on Mac OS X. To get started, he selects SVN Checkout, pastes in the repository URL, and specifies the local folder that will become his working copy of the project. His first task is to update the copyright year. Smart SVN indicates in the local state column that about.html has been modified. If your work relates to a specific job ticket, in this case number two, it's always a good practice to indicate that in your commit comments. Back from lunch, Dave runs SVN update and sees that about.html has been changed. Yep, Prajesh has fixed the copyright year in that file. Now I'll show you how conflicts come up. Dave decides to change the copyright year on the video web page himself. Meanwhile, Prajesh is editing the exact same line of code. His commit comment indicates that ticket number two is now ready for testing, which automatically changes its workflow status in the assembler ticketing system. When Dave tries to commit his update with a snarky message for Prajesh, he discovers his file is out of date. Tortoise SVN offers to update his repository, but now he's got a conflict. Most Subversion clients have tools for resolving conflicts. You may think if you've fixed a conflict, you'll be able to commit again, but you actually need to tell Subversion that you've solved the conflict using SVN Resolved before you're allowed to commit again. The Assembla code browser is a great way to review your code and see how Subversion works. You can see what changed between any two commits and even make inline comments linked to specific lines of your program. If it's a web page, you can preview it from within the code browser. But by far the most important way Assembla enhances the Subversion experience is through the many tools it provides for communication and planning, including the Activity Stream, which provides a unified view of your team's efforts. There's still so much to learn about Subversion, but I hope you can see from my efforts what a worthwhile tool it is, and how Assembly's enhanced Subversion hosting makes it even more useful. Thanks for watching.